Awesome. So, so I run uh, the uh, conformity assessment and consortia at ISA. Uh, there's four of them, including um, the ISA 100 Wireless Compliance Institute. Um, but basically, I'm going to focus on the three that are cybersecurity related and the activities that we're doing. I mean, essentially, what we're trying to do is elevate OT cybersecurity from an art to a science to an engineering discipline. So, uh, Primer ISA is a professional engineering society, specifically automation engineering. It makes it unique in that respect. Um, we have over 15,000 members. We're global in 109 countries, and we touch about 350,000 customers a year. So the Standards Committee was formed in uh, the ISA 99 Standards Committee, where the uh, 62443 standards are published, was formed in uh, 2001, 2002, after 9-11. Uh, Thought-leading engineers recognized that a lot of bad things could happen if uh, terrorists or bad guys uh, got a hold of the automation that controls uh, uh, the critical infrastructure that affects our everyday lives. So today, um, you know, there's been over 1,000 uh, volunteer members and 500 normative requirements, all codifying hundreds and hundreds of years of subject matter expertise in automation um, engineering and cybersecurity. Um, 62443 is the most referenced standard in the NIST um, cybersecurity framework. So this is the organization of it. Uh, top line is the general concepts, lexicons, models. Uh, the next level down, the green uh, represents the um, uh, policies and procedures for standing up uh, programs at operating sites. Uh, the next uh, two levels down address technical security requirements and the security development life cycle for um, off-the-shelf products and the 3.3 on uh, as installed systems at operating sites. So it, it's organized along um, the, uh, the uh, automation life cycle. So on the front end, you have uh, product suppliers who design and manufacture the off-the-shelf systems, and there are standards that address their needs for us uh, security. There's another set of standards that address integrators and asset owners who are doing the site engineering and deployment, and then the, finally um, a set of standards that address asset owners' needs for operating, maintaining, and eventually retiring these systems. So you know you see the arrows going up shows the shared responsibility and arrows going down. For instance, if there's a cyber incident, there's shared responsibility for triaging and figuring out what happened. You know, was it lack of discipline in an operating site? Is it a product problem? Or was something deployed improperly by an integrator? So in 2021, um, something pretty significant uh, happened. The, uh, the um, 62443 was formally designated as a technology horizontal standard, which means that uh, if you're an industry group, for instance, developing functional standards for your industry sector, and you get to the section on cybersecurity, <clears throat> the IEC is directing uh, those groups to use 62443 as the foundational starting point. And the reason is, is a lot of the technology is the same from one sector to the next, and it doesn't make sense to have redundant standards for each of the different sectors. So what's going on with that? So we've been collaborating with a group that's uh, standing up a, a certification scheme for uh, smart buildings and building technology like life safety systems, et cetera. Um, and they're building a uh, uh, sector profile, if you will, or an application guide on how to use the standards for the building sector. <clears throat> Medical devices has been addressed. Um, we just put in place uh, as part of a working, working task at ISA 99, working group 14, um, we announced a request for participation to develop uh, a uh, sector profiles for um, for the um, electric sector, starting with substations. We'll look at power generation as well, um, distribution automation, uh, distributed energy resources, and the like. So uh, there's, this was um, a follow-on project 
from the uh, U.S. Department of Energy last year. They work with some suppliers to develop security profile, and it was largely based on 62443. And uh, um, they looked at the, the standard and said, well, we really want to globalize this, so let's do a pure 62443 sector profile. So what else is going on? Product suppliers. So uh, we did a, a survey uh, in the ISA Global Cybersecurity Alliance looking at adoption rates of 62443 by suppliers. <clears throat> they tend to be ahead of the pack uh, when you look at suppliers, integrators, and end users. End users are doing various things, but uh, the suppliers seem to all be coalescing on 62443. Uh, they're having products certified to 62443. Most of these companies here, we've certified under the ISA Secure Program. But there's other schemes and individual labs also doing certifications as well. So there's plenty of certification work to be done out there. So last year, we trained over 3,100 students in uh, cybersecurity at ISA. Uh, we added a class. Um, I had some questions about this while I was here. <clears throat> it's a three-day class uh, for product suppliers, uh, how to develop a secure product based on 62443. And we added modules uh, to address the needs of uh, these certification bodies where the assessors need to get educated on the standard and, uh, and how to do the assessments to that standard. So we did the first class in April, and there's others being offered in the future. <clears throat> Summary on the three consortiums. So, uh, we have Logic that's housed uh, at ISA. So um, it's the five oil majors. We do research on um, vulnerabilities in automation that's used uh, in uh, oil and gas industry um, operations. Uh, we get some matching resources from uh, DHS, well now from CISA, for this. <clears throat> they like what we do because they recognize that the automation used in oil and gas is similar to other critical infrastructures. So uh, it has value across all the uh, critical infrastructure sections. The ISA Global Cybersecurity Alliance bridges a gap between the standards and the market adoption. So we look for uh, things like uh, Misconceptions like should you use 62443 or ISO 27000? You write a white paper on how the two of them work together, actually. Uh, studies on uh, IIoT devices, uh, IIoT solutions, including the cloud. Um, and then uh, we're funded training development, micro learning modules, and pretty much everything that we develop is free. We put it on a website, and you can find all this stuff on these links. But all this is, you know, for market enablement. Um, the in-person in, uh, classes aren't for free. So ISA Secure, we've been certifying off-the-shelf products for more than 10 years now, since 2010. <coughs> and we have a roadmap to uh, do uh, some other certifications, um, IIoT devices and systems and then uh, operating site. So um, ISA, GCA, we have more than 50 companies and uh, you know their combined revenues, including uh, end users, is more than one and a half trillion dollars of turnover. So ISA, GCA, we're organized to promote best practices for securing automation that affects their everyday lives based on 62443. We have an end user council that stood up. Uh, we're organizing along sectors with that. And then we organize our work, you know, in compliance uh, training, advocacy. These are member organization of ISA GCA. I think there's a couple missing. <clears throat> uh, I think Carrier is missing. But you can see it's uh, traditional process industry players, um, but also uh, building automation showing up in here. Consultancies. So some of our projects and programs I mentioned, but a uh, big one is ICS for ICS, uh, Incident Command System for Industrial Control Systems. So we've collaborated with FEMA and CISA 
to stand up uh, incident uh, command systems, similar to what they do for floods and hurricanes and the like. And so we're using the uh, FEMA database and templates and their same command structure. Uh, and, we've creden and we have a credentialing uh, process. We've credentialed five folks. We expect to do 30 more this year. Um, we did a training exercise at S4 this year. We're going to do another one. Uh, this is global in scope. We have about 1,500 uh, folks that have signed up to participate in this. Um, and we're going to uh, do um, uh, training exercises in other countries, English speaking first, and then some others. Um, what's missing from FEMA, the FEMA uh, database, is there are no, <clears throat> there's no um, personnel profiles for uh, addressing cyber incidences. So, like forensic IT people. Uh, other things like that that you would have uh, in a uh, control system uh, incident. So we're, we've drafted those and uh, we expect to, uh, we've got the first layer of the organization structure defined and then we're going to do like a mile wide and an inch deep. Now we're pushing down and getting the rest of it built out. And, uh, <clears throat> but to make it work, you know, it's going to cost a lot of money and, you know, we're the private side of the public private partnership. We've been talking to CISA about how we're going to work with this, and they kind of came up with this JCDC thing uh, about a year ago, but uh, they're still kind of at the PowerPoint level on that. Uh, so we're continuing to talk with them, but what we really want to see is them to fund it and kind of take it on because uh, I don't think we're the right home for it long term. If it's going to do what it's supposed to do, it's going to you know, cost a lot of money, like in the millions, and have a lot of people. You have to run at 724. At two in the morning, who do you call? You know, so uh, you know we're a consortium. I think we're the wrong place, but we had enough uh, motivation from members to do this, and so we got it going. So we've done some advocacy with uh, government entities. We had an end user council, and we're collaborating with the INL Community of Practice and Workforce Development, adding content and bunches of white papers. So our latest project is a cy uh, supplier cybersecurity benchmarking. So a lot of big supplier companies are wondering, you know, how much money should we be spending to uh, secure our products? You know, is it 3% of our gross revenues? What's the right number? And so they've asked us to do a study uh, to do this benchmarking. And so um, we're looking at partnering with ARC to do this and uh, uh, come up with, uh, with some results on that. So ISA Secure, that's a certification program. I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on this, but um, <clears throat> it's global. It's uh, organized well with a lot of credibility. We have eight accreditation bodies all around the globe that are accrediting labs to do the certifications. We don't, we don't run a lab. We own the scheme. And these are the labs that are in the program. There's 10 or 11 of them. You can see six of them are accredited, and then some are in the progress of being accredited, but they're excellent names. TUV Rhineland, FM Approvals, TUV Sud, Bureau Veritas, DNV. So it's a good bunch of uh, highly credible organizations. Yeah, so today we're uh, certifying off-the-shelf products down at the product supplier end of things. And our roadmap is the shaded areas in the top to address the integrators and owner operators. So those programs will kick off later this year. Bunches of products certified in the last couple of years. So anyways, uh, links to lots of resources out there. So that's it. <clears throat>